KUAM News Headlines is presented by Calvo's Insurance, serving Guam for 80 years. Matson and the Adai Tano Program. Harley Davidson of Guam, visit our new showroom, now located on Route 8 in Mighty. IP&E, fueling excellence. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it. And King's Restaurant, located in Timuning and Dededo. Always open, always local. Right now on Primetime, could a new year mean budget cuts for the government's largest agency? Plus, more drugs have been intercepted at the local prison just days after a separate contraband incident. And Guam Guardsmen are activated for their mission to secure the missile defense system on Anderson Air Force Base. My friends, thanks so much for tuning in. I'm Jason Salas. These are tonight's top headlines. And your Department of Education is facing yet another slice in their budget. This time, Bibumar has announced a reduction in the Territorial Education Facilities Fund with the $9 million fund shortfall said to come only after Governor Calvo vetoed a bill that, if passed, would have increased property taxes on property development worth more than a million dollars. Carmen Chalahi has our top story. A veto of one bill now means less funding. The intention of Bill 374-34 was to place an additional tax on real property improvements valued at $1 million or more. Estimated to bring in $9 million in funds paid to GovGuam, the money would be set aside for the Territorial Education Facilities Fund. But the bill was vetoed last week Wednesday by Governor Eddie Calvo, who cites several reasons, including the failure of the Tran bill, saying, quote, the 34th legislature passed this bill with a total of seven votes. Quite frankly, if seven votes were not enough to ensure the government could give Guamanians their tax refunds in days, then seven votes should not be enough to raise taxes. Calvo adds the bill is regressive and disincentivizes property owners from investing and developing their properties, which is counterproductive to growing our economy, end quote. As a result, the TEF funds for fiscal year 2019 are short. That's according to Director Lester Carlson in a letter to heads of public education. Though the chart listing the required TEF reduction varies by agency, the Guam Department of Education is facing the largest cut at $4 million less in funds. Superintendent John Fernandez tells KUAM they're, quote, disappointed by the directive to further cut and already are operating with over $15 million in cuts from last year's budget. Only days away from a new transition in power, Fernandez adds that, quote, it's my hope that the incoming administration and the legislature will work hand in hand to address the issue as soon as they can. Otherwise, we will need to make further and deeper cuts in the middle of the school year. So what does this mean for Guam's public education? BBMR is requesting that departments send a written action plan to include cost-cutting measures and revenue enhancements by January 25th. Reporting for Guam Seas Network, I'm Carmen Victoria Trilaki. All right, thanks so much, Carm. In other news, the Italian national caught on camera installing skimming devices on local automatic teller machines won't be taking his chances with a jury. Nicola Marinelli appeared in court on Thursday with an Italian interpreter, and although he was set to go to trial next week, parties advised the court that he would be signing off on a plea deal later today. A vigilant Bank of Guam staffer recognized Marinelli at Pizza Hut in Tamooning. He allegedly had matched the description and surveillance imagery released in connection to the case. Details of that plea agreement were not made public as of yet, with a change of plea hearing set for tomorrow morning. Well, the man elsewhere charged in the choking death of his uncle heads to trial next month, with Casados Kiku appearing in court today. He was arrested in 2017 for aggravated assault, negligent homicide, and family violence. Court documents stated Kiku shared a joint home with Robert Borja Cruz. The men apparently got into a fight that ended on the ground. Cruz reportedly died as a result of asphyxia due to choking and heart attack. Trial is on February the 6th. Well, also set to face a jury next month is Vera Del Rosario, who was working for public health in the Women, Infant and Children's Division when she was allegedly dealing the drug known as ICE. Our news archives show she was arrested in 2016 after drugs and explosives were found in her office, her home and in her car. Trial is set on the 27th of February for that matter. Well, it is, of course, as you now know, it's a new year and the local prison is already investigating another case of contraband being smuggled on the inside. Nick Delgado has a report. Sealed tight and wrapped up, corrections officers intercepted the drug ICE, marijuana and tobacco, found at the Manila compound on New Year's Day. 
this just a few days after a woman was placed under arrest, accused of trying to smuggle similar items to an inmate. DEPCOR Director Tony LaMorena. You know, the inmates, I guess, wanted to celebrate, so uh, you know, we had to throw in. We have the, the woman who tried to bring in contraband. But you know, uh, we're, we're seeing a, a, a decrease in, in contraband. Uh, we do daily shakedowns, un, unannounced shakedowns. And uh, unlike in the past, where we were finding sh uh, contraband uh, at almost every shakedown, now we're lucky if we find one out of ten. Fortunately, he says they found these items before they got into the wrong hands. And the problem the director says is security or the lack thereof and how some drivers can easily access certain parts of the prison. Like the area here near the domes where people apparently throw the contraband over the fence and into the facility. Because of the proximity to the street. So uh, again, you know, that's one of the things too that we have to do is, is uh, how do we now strengthen our fence lines so that we avoid uh, additional throw-ins. The challenge for investigators is finding out who tossed the drugs in and who it was intended for. I believe the people inside know who it's going to go to. So, but in regards to any identifying uh, names or, or uh, initials in there, there was nothing there. Despite the ongoing enforcement efforts, La Marina admits there is just no way of completely stopping everyone attempting to sneak drugs and other items not allowed into the prison. But, uh, you know, uh, with the efforts of the staff, uh, we're, making, uh, we're making a dent in that. The drugs and tobacco have since been turned over to Guam police. Anyone with information is asked to call authorities or Guam Crime Stoppers at 477-HELP. Reporting for Guam's News Network, Guahu Scenic Delgado. All right, speaking of New Year, did you ring yours in with a bang? GPD spokesman Sergeant Paul Tapao says they were busy responding to several calls for gunshots fired and noise complaints possibly related to illegal fireworks. I want to remind the community that there were several sanctioned events that were authorized permits were given. Um, one was at the EPA, the New Year's Eve celebration. The other was at Sheraton, Leo Palace, and the Nico Hotel. So every other shows that you may have witnessed, um, you know, we are, we are um, taking in the, the videos. And again, it's a tribute to social media. We have to validate and solidify these, these videos that are coming in to determine where it came from, whether it was within the year or how we can actually move forward with um, using this as evidentiary value. GPD, the sergeant does confirm, is actively working with the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives relative to videos that surfaced in agate depicting suspected fireworks that were, of course, illegal. And also tonight, Guam Army National Guard personnel will take over security for an anti-ballistic missile defense system up at Anderson Air Force Base in Jigo, the site seen as a key to the island's defense against potential aggression by North Korea, as Nestor Lakanto explains in this next story. The Terminal High Altitude Area Defense System, known as a THAAD, was first deployed to Anderson about five years ago in response to the growing missile threats by Pyongyang. It is one of our last lines of defense and is capable of shooting down missiles aimed at Guam. It will be the Guardsmen's job to maintain security at the site. Lieutenant Chavez Leonin is in charge of the group. So we've actually been preparing for quite some time now, uh, several months, several sacrifice uh, days and weeks uh, that the soldiers have already partaken uh, to prepare themselves. Uh, at this point in time, it's, it's basically more of a validation to show that we can, we can do the mission, which uh, I'm highly confident we can. Tensions ran high in the fall of 2017 when North Korean leader Kim Jong-un made a direct threat of a missile attack against Guam. He and President Trump were engaged in an escalating war of words over Pyongyang's nuclear testing. Calm was eventually restored only after the two met last June at a summit in Singapore. Still, the military maintains its vigilance, and 71 soldiers are assigned to the year-long mission dubbed Task Force Guahan. It is the first time a local unit will provide security for the THAAD site known as Task Force Talon. It's definitely a milestone for the Guam Army National Guard. Um, I want to say pride is, is, is the best way uh, to put it. Is, you know, uh, we're, we're proud that we, we got the mission, and, and knowing that we're, we're serving something that's, that's greater than us, and we're... we're um, literally protecting the island and, and where we're from. Unlike typical National Guard deployments though, this one does not require them to travel to faraway conflict zones. So it is definitely unique in that aspect. Um, it still poses a lot of challenges. Um, there's still a lot of leadership uh, requirements that we have to meet. Um, I believe the soldiers are well aware that um, what their mission is and to stay mission focused. So uh, we're ready, we're ready. We're the army and proudly proclaim. First to fight for the right and to build the nation.
fight and the army goes rolling along. For Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Leconto. Can hear that a thousand times and never get tired of hearing it. Good job, everybody. All right, we are going to take a quick commercial break, but please stay tuned and keep streaming us because prime time continues right after this. There are more ways to experience Guam via KUAM News, giving you what you want, when you want, and how you want it. From smart devices, Alexa, what's in the news? Here's your flash briefing. Over the web, on mobile, on streaming platforms, with immersive, interactive formats, and via social media where it's more than just content, it's conversation. More ways to keep you informed and entertained whenever you want it, wherever you are, on whatever device you're using. Cheers to 80 years. It's our 80th anniversary and the gifts are on us. 80 gift certificates, 8 shopping sprees, 8 staycations, and one round trip flyaway for two to Manila. So how do you enter? Cavos Insurance personal home and auto customers are automatically entered. Non-Cavos customers may enter by receiving a qualified quote. It's our way of saying thank you for trusting us for the past 80 years. For more details, visit Cavos.com slash giveaway or call 472-6816. Cavos Insurance, serving Guam for 80 years. Chuck E. Cheese's Guam is not all fun and games. Our pizza is delicious with the freshest toppings, oven baked to order. Try the fresh salad bar, sandwiches, and don't forget our mouth-watering wings. Come and eat at Chuck E. Cheese's Guam. This year is rapidly coming to an end, and the big finish is now on at Cars Plus and Mighty. Get big year-end deals on a big selection of new Ram trucks with savings up to $10,500. Or save up to $5,500 on a new Chrysler Pacifica. How about a new Jeep Compass? Save up to $5,000. With financing as low as 1.99%. Plus, receive a Cars Plus Shell Value Card with every vehicle purchase. The big finish means big savings right now at Cars Plus and Mighty. Cars Plus, driven by you. Hello and welcome back everybody. More cabinet and sub-cabinet members have been named for the Leon Guerrero Tenorio administration. Let's start from the top. Chelsea Munya Brecht has been picked to serve as the Department of Agriculture's director with Melanie Brennan as director of the Department of Youth Affairs. Crescinda Uggen is DY's deputy director with David Della Sola, director of the Department of Labor. Jerry Tovis is his deputy. Richard Ibanez has been selected as the director of Parks and Rec with Victor Villagomez serving as that agency's deputy director. Also, Anne-Marie Arceo has been tapped to be president of Department of Chamorro Affairs. General Roderick Leon Guerrero is the adjutant general of the Department of Military Affairs. Ina Carrillo, <coughs> beg your pardon, is station manager of PBS Guam. Celestine Babauta is the Guam Regional Transit Authority director. Leah Bethnahalawa is executive director of the Guam Commission for Educator Certification. Lassie Casil has been picked as Hagania Restoration and Redevelopment Authority director with Fred Berdalio, Department of Veterans Affairs director. <coughs> oh, excuse me again. Alice Tyron is president of the GHC with Angela Camacho picked as the housing manager of the Guam Housing Corporation. At least one incoming senator in other news is looking into what can be done to the federal ban on cockfighting. In a statement issued to KUM News, Senator Tina Rose Mooney Barnes says, quote, Going into the 35th legislature, I've instructed my staff and our committee to analyze any and all legal precedents and examine any recourse to this culturally insensitive provision. I want all cockfighting enthusiasts to know that your concerns have not fallen on deaf ears and, sh and I, she says, will tirelessly advocate for you and the preservation of our cultural sport." And quote that once again as Senator-elect Tina Rose Mooney Barnes. Last month, President Trump did sign off on the Farm Bill, placing a federal ban on cockfighting in all states and territories that takes effect very, very soon. Well, regional headlines are coming up. Here's KSPN2 News. Hoffa day Guam, here are the headlines for CNMI. office of Homeland Security and Emergency 
management, along with FEMA. They tell us that Typhoon U2 is expected to be stronger than Typhoon Sutilor that hit and traumatized the island in 2015. In fact, they say this is going to be the biggest storm the CNMI has seen since Typhoon Jean in the late 1960s. This storm is definitely picking up a lot faster than expected. Governor Torres maintained Typhoon Condition 1 as of um, 8 a.m. this morning. The National Weather Service as well as um, our, um, our first responders are are planning for a Category 5 storm. We are already in coordination with FEMA to get an emergency declaration as soon as the storm clears. On October 25, 2018, the Marianas was hit and weathered what is said to be the biggest storm of 2018 and the largest typhoon to reach U.S. soil on record. Solar's not compared to this. I've never been so scared in my life. Maria tells us that she went room to room, but no matter what room that she went into, the destruction just kept getting worse. And this is the room she tells us that the aircon was ripped right off of the wall. And there are many in this community right now on this island, Tinian, and the Marianas all together that are homes are look just like this. All of this that completely is ruined. The storm door is supposed to be supporting them and it's ripped down. The ceiling ripped down. It's devastating. We had a pretty good structure here, but <laughs> It's, it's torn off roofs and walls. Just seeing my room, but I uh, can't come in because everything is falling down. We did call for help about 4 o'clock in the morning, but they, oh, they can't do anything about yeah. it. Yeah, even uh, okay. so all we got to do is pray. I cannot. Somebody just have to rescue me because the whole house, the, the whole way was blocked. I, I was blocked. I couldn't get out. It, it really did a number. On, on our island, and I just recently found out that I, I think that might have been the uh, most, uh, the strongest uh, typhoon ever on U.S. soil. So uh, we were hit hard. We were hit very hard. It's going to be a long process, uh, but sticking together, como un familia, un guenaza, se prestita, build cinema strong, and we're going to build it stronger. Here in San Antonio, where recovery efforts are continuing. And as you can see behind me, locals are volunteering their time to help clean up the destruction. Here at this shelter is Team Rubicon, not only bringing themselves, but also necessary medical equipment. The second typhoon response clinic has opened up here in Dan Dan. We wanted to make sure to get the care to people down here. We were greeted from the second that we got here with uh, hospitality and it was it was wonderful. Red Cross supplies that aren't necessarily donations have come in as well. Things like uh, cleanup kits, um, hygiene kits. You know, it's just what you do for family. We just we just started. Uh, first, we took care of their health and made sure everything was set there. We got FEMA registered, and uh, I put the word out. It, it sounds horrible, but I'm glad we got to experience this. Yes. And and and. Not from our own perspective, but from how the community came together. Because this this gives you hope for you know when you see the stuff on the news. Yeah, if you, humanity exactly. You said it. You give hope for humanity. For more news, visit SiapanTV.com. For KSPN Two News, I'm Ashley McDowell. All right, back to Guam news headlines, and it is that time of year again as the Guam Department of Education is now calling on nominations for the 2019 Teacher of the Year. You can nominate your favorite teacher by February 1st, that's a Friday. They must be fully certified, a full-time teacher who has worked for GDOE for at least five years. You can go online to gdoe.net to download the nomination form, and good luck to the nominees. Well, in honor of the season of giving, our friends at IT Nee, the Make-A-Wish Foundation Guam, and the CNMI partnered up to give joy to the community this holiday season. They made one little boy's wish come true, gifting Isaac Baza an iPad just in time for Christmas. It's one of many gifts included in his shopping spree. 
IT Nini also donated 1,000 solar lamps to the CNMI Office of the Governor to benefit the victims of Super Typhoon U2 and those who are still without power. Those solar lamps are valued at 100 grand. They also joined Guam businesses to support the Guam International Airport's Deck Out Halls and Give campaign for the CNMI First Lady Diane Torres Foundation. The effort is also to assist the relief and recovery efforts for the victims of U2. Well, it's time for another break. Sports is coming up next, but first, here is your island weather. MTO, professional janitorial services with a warm hospitality touch. MTO gives that gift year-round. Pressure wash roofs, pressure wash driveways, lawn service, home cleaning, carpet restoration, office cleaning, commercial cleaning, commercial window cleaning, floor care. When cleaning is in order, MTO has you covered. Call 647-6861 to inquire on how you can receive the maintenance you deserve. MTO, celebrating 30 years with you, Guam. What's that? An offer insurance customer needs a claim settled immediately? I'm on it. Agent Alpha. In the event of an accident, theft, or breakdown, each of our Alpha Insurer agents are trained to go above and beyond. This is my stop. There she is. Target acquired. Agent Alpha. Yes! Shell's Million Miles Giveaway is back, and we're giving 100,000 United Mileage Plus Miles to 10 lucky winners. So how do you make your getaway? Just use your Lucky 7 card when you fuel up with 7 gallons or more, and you're automatically entered to win. Fuel up at your nearest Shell station today and start planning your new adventure. No purchase necessary. Some conditions apply. See stores for details. When catastrophic storms strike, do you know how to respond? The Building Industry Association of Hawaii, in partnership with the University of California, San Diego, is providing free disaster response and preparedness training. This training is designed for first responders, contractors, workers, and volunteers, and is open to anyone who has an interest in being better prepared for natural disasters. Please visit our website or call 888-479-4322. KUAM Sports is presented by Triple J. What's up, Guam? Dave Delgado here for KUAM Sports. Thanks for watching. NFL teams trying to keep their Super Bowl dreams alive. I'll get to your programming news in just a bit on which games you can catch on the stations at KUAM. But first off, some basketball highlights from the Guam Elite Center. Check it out. KSA's Burt Arulong going to the rack after seeing an opening in the lane. Gets the bounce and two points for his squad. Navy fired down early but started to chip away at the lead. Nim Hong Sar hits the short range jumper leading the way with a game high 19 points. KSA trying to keep the tempo of the game moving. Arulong going coast to coast and finishes off the play with the no look pass to Jimmy Pallick for the easy layup. John Kanemoto brings the ball up court for Navy fire. Quick dish down low to Adrian Etchon, who feeds big man Tanner Nelson for two of his eight points of the game. Corner three by Kanemoto, rims out, rebound by Julius McWellung. Pass to Arulong, who draws over the defender, back to McWellung. Navy Fire with the win, 69-65. to Good ball movement by Navy Fire to get the ball to David Pop for the long two. Pop finished the game with four points. John Salas walked away with the 2018 Guam Senior Bowlers Association Senior Grand Finals title. Salas defeated third seed Manny Tagle and November champion Patricia Roberto to take the crown. John took the first game 210 to 172 with handicap, followed by a 173 172 one pin victory in the second game for the win. Salas takes home bragging rights for the year, the championship trophy, and $1,000 cash money. Congratulations to all of last year's participants.
In programming news, make sure to catch all of your NFL action right here on the stations of KUAM. It's win and move on or lose and go home for teams trying to advance in the postseason. Early game for you on KUAM TV 11, Monday, January 7th, NFL on CBS. AFC wildcard matchup, the Los Angeles Chargers, led by Phillip Rivers, head to Baltimore to face dual threat quarterback Lamar Jackson. Then at 7.30 in the morning on KUAM TV 8, NBC Sunday Night Football, another wildcard playoff matchup between the Eagles, who have now put the ball in the hands of last year's Super Bowl MVP Nick Foles. Philly makes the trip to hostile territory to face the Chicago Bears and Khalil Mack. The Bears are on a four-game win streak, with the defense only giving up 10.5 points per game through that stretch. Khalil Mack leads the defense with 12.5 sacks this season. Well, that's going to do it for sports. We're back right after this. To feel powerful. To feel brave. To feel like you can do something to make a difference. Spark a life, touch a heart. It's the power of being inspired. And I inspire to be here because. Family. We support our island. People. I love my job. You. Tradition. People. Familiar. My kids. Familiar. My family. Family. The future. We're family. Family. We make dreams come true. My coworkers. I can help others. Family. Family. We love our community. Familiar spirit. Familial environment. My familia. My wife and kids. Here's to the flavorful. That was unafraid to show their signature style, signature moves, signature everything you add the spice that makes life interesting so to you we raise a sandwich as flavorful as you are for mcdonald's signature crafted recipes try the new savory creamy mushroom and swiss burger part of the signature crafted recipes lineup only at mcdonald's Attention drivers, it's your last chance to save big during Triple J Auto Group's absolute year-end clearance. Take advantage of our lowest prices of the year on Hondas, Acuras, Fords, Mazdas, Lincolns, Volvos, Kias, and used cars. Plus, no payment for 90 days or 1.9% financing on approved credit during our absolute year-end clearance. Visit us online, triplejguam.com, and get pre-approved instantly. Some conditions apply. See dealer for details. Triple J Auto Group, customers first. You know what it is? It's the end of the show, and you know what time that is? It's time for some birthday shoutouts. All right, let's wish some very special Guamanians a happy birthday today. Aisha Jean Rages blows out the candles. To our beautiful daughter, we love you to the moon and back. Enjoy your special day. Say mom, Frank, and your entire family. Also, we love you mom and grandma going out to Cecilia Borja Munya. Here's to many more great years from your kids, your grandkids, and your beloved husband. And last but certainly not least, Shean Mercy Regis Lazama has a birthday today. Hope everyone had a incredibly wonderful birthday. You know I'm saying that thing about about the army theme. I've been doing this show for like seven years for this segment. Do, 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 do. Never get tired of that every single night. It is awesome and you too can be part of the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club. Register on KUM.com and then tune in. It's that easy. Please stay tuned. In the Mix is next. Closed captioning is brought to you by IT&E.